Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today I'm going to be trying to answer a few questions and also show some of the subtle differences between uh, carbon steel TIG wire ER70S-2 versus ER70S-6. And all this talk will be so much more interesting if we're looking at a weld puddle while we're talking about it. So that's what we're going to do. I was tack welding these backing straps on these test plates for some future videos on flux core, some dual shield flux core and also some other stuff. And by the way, thanks Triangle Engineering for the plates. But some of them got cleaned really well, some of them didn't get cleaned so well. So I happened to think, well, why not give it a shot here, try some 6 versus 2 TIG wire and see if there's any difference on the test plates. So here's the deal. ER70S6 contains more silicon than ER70S2, but ER70S2 also contains some zirconium, titanium, and some aluminum, which are also deoxidizers, in addition to silicon and manganese. So I figured let's try some stuff here and see how it flushes out and see what we can learn. Now this particular area here is cleaned fairly well, so I decided to use the ER70S2 first, 1 16th diameter at about 150 amps. And it's, it's it's welding fairly clean, even though you could see little remnants of hot rolled uh, mill scale in there, welded really clean. All right, picked another area that looked about the same, welded it with ER70S6, welding pretty clean, flowing pretty well, again about 150 amps. I am using like a number six Pyrex cup here, and the only reason I'm using Pyrex is just because it seems to help with the filming process. Doesn't seem to make a bit of difference on the uh, actual shielding. This area, while it looked clean, is welding kind of crappy. It is possible to polish over mill scale and think you have clean, bright metal, and really what you have is shiny mill scale. That's what's going on here. And it, that ER70S6 floats those oxides out to the surface like that and deposits them on the surface. This area here is not cleaned very well at all. The backing strap is not even touched and the bottom plate is slightly slightly cleaned but it's just nasty you can see all that mill scale which is actually iron oxide just floating into the puddle and looks pretty much like Fido's butt all wrinkly all those oxides floated to the surface and deposited there now let's try the same thing with ER70S2 and I actually didn't notice a lot of difference here uh, not much difference at all. Both of them welded crappy. However, the end result, there was a little bit of difference. The two looks looks better. So there's the two, there's the six. And I don't know that there was any difference in them, but anyway, more silicon doesn't always translate into better welds on crappy metal on TIG. Now on MIG welding, hot rolled plate, having ER70S6 uh, can help. But you got a whole different scenario there. You got CO2 usually mixed in the gas. This is 7525 argon CO2. So the fact that there's an active gas there, and also the fact that there's a, a much more aggressive arc and some churning going on, is a whole different affair than TIG welding. Now, that brings me to this. What do you do with these leftover little remnants of wire that you get when you have to clean out a bird's nest or change spools of wire? Here's one idea. You can twist them up and turn them into little straight pieces of filler wire for TIG welding. So this is ER70S6030 MIG wire made into some TIG wire. And it actually works pretty well as a substitute for 1 16th, 1.6 millimeter TIG wire. All right, back to the TIG welding here. Bead on plate with ER70S2 when you're not penetrating all the way through and you don't have mill scale to worry about. This is clean metal. There's very little difference between between ER70S2 and ER70S6. Very subtle differences. A lot of people probably couldn't tell the difference at all. I might not be able to tell the difference if you didn't tell me what rod I was using. But now on a, on a thin piece of plate, this is 048, 1.2 millimeter thick cold rolled steel. I'm penetrating all the way through the back side is exposed to air, which means it's going to be oxidized. It's going to be drawing oxidation into the puddle. Now that's where there's a difference in the wires. 
not flowing all that wonderfully there because the backside is basically oxidizing and it's pulling it into the puddle. Not doing too bad, but not great. And I'll weld the second half with the R70S2 and we'll look at the difference in the penetration side and we'll see that there is some difference. Here is the ER70S6, not purged but fairly smooth. And we move on to the ER70S2 and to me it's just irregular and not as smooth. And actually that's kind of the takeaway from this little project here is when you're penetrating all the way through something that's when you will see differences in the ER70S6 and the 2. The 6 usually doing a little bit better on the on the penetration side. Now let's weld the same thickness and same material using this little purge fixture here. This is a simple purge test fixture I had to whip together in about a day to start testing welders a long time ago. And I'm using a number 12 Furic cup here and honestly I couldn't tell much difference at all in the puddle from the front side and when you turn it over and look at the purged side not much difference at all there either it's between the 6 and the 2. So with a purge, not much difference. The deoxidizers don't really have any work to do there. Now, I'm not saying you need to purge the backside of carbon steel, but some people do, and in some applications it makes sense. An example is Zanconato Custom Cycles. Mike Zanconato purges all of his steel and chromoly frames because he doesn't want to see this on the inside of his tubes when he penetrates through. He would rather see this because with uh, stresses and fatigue properties being what they are, this is less likely to form a crack years down the road than the rough one is. I'm going to take an opportunity right now to talk about some products that I sell on my store, the Weldmonger store. This is a 6G root pass, keyholing the root, and this is a 309 filler being purged on the inside. And when you're doing this kind of, this kind of work, a TIG finger really, really can help. You can learn more at weldmonger.com. I also have them bundled up where you can get a regular and an XL size for a little bit of savings. This is Roy Crumrine doing that pie cut weld that we did in a, a, a video or two ago. And when you're doing aluminum like this, you know how much it heats up and having a good place to prop really helps. A handrail type joint like this, it's kind of hard to walk the cup on because of the odd angles and everything really comes in handy to be able to prop right next to the well and, and just anytime you need to prop and don't have a, a decent place to prop. I've also got a, a little bundle put together with the TIG finger and the Furic number 12 cup. You can save a little money there and also stubby gas lens kit where if you have a 17 or 18 or 26 style big torch and you want to use a small style cups on there with gas lenses and then a basic kit for a little savings that uses only 332 sizes and then if you already have a 9 or 20 style small torch, a gas lens kit, also with a TIG Finger and a TIG Finger XL all kind of marked down a little bit. That about wraps it up for this week. So I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching. I know you have other choices when it comes to welding channels out there on YouTube. But I appreciate you spending time on my channel. We'll see you here next time.